You are listening now to A Word of Faith with Bishop Macedo. My dear listener, pay attention to what I'm going to tell you. What I'm going to say is not my thought, it's God's thought. It is what is written. It is written in God's word, and it was Jesus who spoke. And he said, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, it passes through dry places seeking rest, but finds none. Then it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, finds it empty, swept, and put in order. Then it goes and brings with itself seven other spirits more evil than itself. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. So, Take this as an example. Take this as an alert for your life. Make sure that your faith is always pure and clean. Pure and clean. Because your life depends on it. Our life depends on our faith and it must be clean. It cannot be contaminated. It cannot be sick. It cannot even catch a cold. It cannot even catch a cold. Because if it becomes weak, doubts become stronger. And then chaos comes to one's life. So learn. Learn to defend your faith. Learn to heal your faith. Learn to establish your faith. And how can you establish your faith? How can you sustain your faith? How can you make your faith to be alive when you read God's Word? Because God's Word brings faith. God's Word sustains our faith. God's Word is what brings the spirit of faith, God's Spirit within us. So then, when you read the Bible, putting the Word of God into practice day and night, for you to meditate on God's Word, you don't need to be necessarily speaking occupied. You can meditate in His words when you are at work, in the morning, in the afternoon. The only time you cannot meditate on God's word when you are sleeping. But as long as, but when you are awake, you can meditate. You are there in the bathroom, doing your business. You can meditate on God's word. You are there taking a shower. You can meditate on God's word. You are driving your car. You can meditate on God's word without losing your attention while driving. You are at work and you can meditate. You can meditate on God's Word any time of the day while you are awake because this is how God speaks to us. This is how God He speaks to us when we are thinking on His words, when we meditate in His Word. So then He brings the answers so that we may overcome our doubts. Change me now, change the shape of my heart. Want to listen to you, understand what to do. The shape of my heart Like clay in the hands of the potter Give me a heart that is tender Cast off 
this heart of stone I want to be in the center of all that you want Mold me now, oh Lord Change my heart for one that is pure Surrender to you May your will be done inside of me Always change my heart Change me now Change the shape of my heart Want to listen to you Understand what to do Mold me now Mold the shape of my heart Like clay in the hands of the potter Give me a heart that is tender and cast off this heart of stone I want to be in the center of all that you want Mold me now, oh Lord Change my heart for one that is pure to you May your will be done inside of me Always change my Alan is now a good-natured family man. But in the past, his bad temper made any relationship impossible. I would go into this deep despair of hell. I was a failure. I could not get, get out of this mess. I was so messed up. There's really no reason to live. Uh, I was a total snap case. I would lose my temper. I was a complete wreck. It was total despair. An abusive father and an alcoholic mother turned his childhood into hell. It was kind of twisted, though, because when she was drinking, she'd call me names. Oh, you're just like your father. Look at my face. That's what your father does. You are just like your father. 
But on the other hand, she said, oh, you're, you're such a great guy. You're destined for great things. It was really confusing. My sweet boy, you are the best thing that has ever happened to me. I had a serious rage issue, which my dad had too. My first wife, there was a time that we got in an argument and I just lost it. Alan became the person he feared, his father. When he realized it, he started running away from any social interaction and became a lonely man. And I think that was the beginning of the end of our, my first relationship. He said, I don't want to be with you. I, I, you know, I want to get a separation. Let's, let's split up. Ultimately, I lost my job. It was a mess. It just everything went wrong. I was so depressed I couldn't keep a job. So I decided I'll go to GR and welfare, actually. Get some food stamps, get a couple hundred bucks a month, whatever to keep me satisfied. I think I just saw you in the line of welfare. So what's your story? I'm sorry? How did you end up picking up food and welfare? And I had just met the most beautiful person that I could ever meet. We started out as friends and it grew into a relationship. And we broke up because of my behavior. It was she who invited him to a place where they could help him. You got my message? Yeah, I did. I watched this program on TV about a place where they help people like us. And if they can help us, maybe we can become family. And so I went to that initial meeting. I will trust in you. I will trust in That's when my life completely changed. So it was just no nonsense, real, honest truth. And I can't even explain it. It was just, it was results based. It was practical. It was like, whoa. It was just shocking almost. It was like, man, this is awesome. After I left, I was like, you know, lighter, feeling like I could conquer the world with my eyes open. And I started to learn what real faith was. It's making up your mind about what you want and not letting anything get in your way. You determine something by faith, you know, knowing God is with you behind that. God saved me, not just saved me like, oh, he saved my soul. He saved me out of the pit. And in my own, just my own opinion, my own, the way I think is I owe God my life. Thanks be to God, my dear listener, when we insist for people to come to the universal church of the kingdom of God, we actually do it in the reason to bring to them the medication, the basic medication to heal they are wounds, spiritual and physical. Because God's word, which is preached in the universal church, it is like potassium that cleanses and purifies, removing any kind of impurity. So God's word is God's spirit in action. And when you hear the word of God, we know and we have the conscience that this word produces an effect, a powerful effect in your life, in your body, in your mind. You become powerful in your battles and the conflicts that you have in your life. You become powerful to overcome the daily battles you face. And it's needed for you to have this conscience so that when you fight in the universal church, we know and we teach and we guide people to hear God's word and practice. Because it's not a matter of just hearing and understanding. Because if the person does not practice, they are not going to have benefits. It's like you say, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not be in want. Amen. But for you not to be in want, you need to obey 
the word of the shepherd. You need to follow the direction of the Lord because it's not going to be worth nothing. I have the green pastures behind the mountain. But if you only hear the instruction, you will not get there. So you must follow the voice. And this is what the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God seeks to do and bring this conscience to you. Faith and intelligence go together. Although faith sounds crazy to this world, it's intelligent because it makes us know that we can be happy. Faith also keeps us from accepting a life of defeat and allows us to fight to conquer a life of victory and success. If nothing is going according to plan, it's time for you to use your intelligence and faith to bring to existence the desires of your heart. The Universal Church, a place of faith to change your life. had finally found happiness. But years ago, the death of her father pushed her into a deep depression. Many bad things happened to me. I started having a lot of nightmares. I started doing drugs. I dropped out of school also. I was just like a mess. My family was against me. I lost everything. I, I, lost, I lost everything. everything. Like... My name is Eunice and this is my story. When my father passed away in my early 20s, um, everything changed for me. I started having a lot of nightmares with demons and things chasing me and things like that. So when my father passed away, I became very depressed. I dropped out of school also, and I had a lot of family problems. My mother and I were fighting all the time. My sister and I were fighting all the time. And after Eunice dropped out of school, the constant arguments with her mother and her sister 
made her feel like an unwelcome guest in her own house. So I would just always be in the streets, never at home. I went in a completely different way of life. So I started hanging out with a lot of people that were bad for me. I started doing drugs. I started hanging out in the streets a lot. I dated a lot of drug dealers and just very, very, very bad people. Her relationship with her family started to deteriorate and Eunice found solace in drugs and bad company. So I saw myself losing so much. I was losing money. I had no money. I was going broke all the time. I lost my job. And the breaking point came for me when I actually was coming home one day and I got robbed in front of my house. And then after that, it was like everything exploded. My family turned their backs against me. It was a very emotional time for me because I felt very vulnerable because I just got robbed in front of my house and then my family wasn't there for me. So I literally had no one and I ran away from home. Um, I was sleeping in my car. Running away from home didn't ease the pain of losing her father. And Eunice soon realized she was the only cause of her suffering. I started hanging out and dating a guy who was terrible for me. And I looked at myself and I just felt like I didn't even recognize myself. I was just like a mess. My family was against me. I lost everything and I just didn't even recognize myself. I'm drinking, I'm smoking, I'm hanging out with somebody who's terrible for me, who doesn't really care for me. It was just, that was the breaking point for me, I realized. This is not who I am. I don't recognize myself and I don't see my future. I used to always envision my future, but going down that path, I just didn't even have a vision. I had no vision for my future. I didn't know how I was going to get out of it. I lost my job in a terrible way and I was very depressed. I was very upset and I was just crying to my amazing friend, Tasha. The advice of a friend introduced her to God, and for the first time in years, Eunice dreamt of a future without chronic sadness. Then she said, you know what, why don't you come to church with me? So I said, okay. You know, I felt God calling me. It was just so many things happened, and I just knew, like, God is calling me. So when she invited me to church that day, I said, okay. It was completely different from any church I've ever been to, and it was very empowering. You know, the messages are very empowering. They teach you how to take control of your life. And I first started to see change in my family. Everything changed, everything really changed. I think my family saw that I was changing also, and like I gained so much strength from going to the Universal Church. I gained a lot of faith. I have more financial freedom than I did before. And I'm so optimistic, I'm so, so much happier than I've ever been because I see, you know, the manifestation of my faith in my life. You know, through going to the church, it helps me to forgive. It helped me to really make peace with my past. I'm just overjoyed because I wish I came to this church like 10 years ago because I would have never gone through all the things that I've gone through. But I know and I understand that I needed to go through those dark times in order to get to where I am now and to know that I'm never going back on that other path because I know there's nothing else out there for me. I've been just so happy. So it's just amazing. I'm just, I'm really happy with the way things have been going. And I know that only better things are coming my way, only greater and greater and, and more success and more happiness. And I'm just excited to see like what the future holds because Thanks to the intelligent faith, now Eunice is a cheerful woman. Lord, I come to you to offer up this prayer lifting up my heart uncovered pure and bare then when I gaze at the wall for my God.
so my soul faints and longs for you. So my soul faints and longs for you. 